Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and in today's tutorial I am showing you how I created this Black History Month inspired Tumblr. So I actually created this Tumblr based off this image which I found off of Etsy. It's an absolutely gorgeous image that I happened to stumble across in my search for another image and I knew I had to use this on a Tumblr. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You'll even find some discount codes for a lot of the products that I use and also my social media links as well to follow me on other platforms. So if you love today's video, definitely make sure before you leave to give this video a huge thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. It will cost you absolutely nothing, but it really does help me grow my channel even more. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. Okay, so we are starting in Cricut Design Space. So I have already uploaded the image that I purchased from Etsy and I have sized that to be 3.5 inches in width. I'm now uploading the brick template that I grabbed from another Etsy shop and I'm sizing it to fit my tumbler. So my tumbler is a 24 ounce plump we're gonna be using. So I'm sizing it to be 10 inches wide by eight inches tall. So as I said before, I am using a 24 ounce plump today. So this is a tumbler from the Steel Magnolia and I have cut my image for the brick template on a piece of removable vinyl. You could also use stencil vinyl as well, which I have linked down in the description box below. So I'm now just going to quickly weed through this brick template here and we're gonna get it applied. So you definitely wanna make sure that you prep your tumbler. You certainly could um, prep with either a white base primer or what I like to use, which is the flat white spray paint from Rust-Oleum. So once I've gotten my template completely um, weeded here, I'm now just going to apply my transfer tape. So I'm just using a little bit of painter's tape to tape my, my stencil, my removable vinyl down, just because it kept rolling up on me, just to make sure that it was a little bit easier to be able to apply my transfer tape. So now with that sheet of transfer tape, I am just going to cut a piece that is going to fit to size and then I'm going to peel back that white paper backing and begin to apply it. So I'm going to just kind of roll down and using my squeegee and get this piece of transfer tape on nice and smooth and bubble free and wrinkle free so that I have a nice straight edge to work with when I am going to apply this, this template to my tumbler. Now with my transfer tape applied to my removable vinyl, I am going to cut this template down to size so that I don't have so much excess transfer tape on the edges. And I'm going to use a little bit of blue painter's tape to keep my template in place after I've measured, making sure that my template's going to fit all the way around. So this is not a perfect or seamless template. It is the way the template came and I didn't really want to mess with it because I knew that I was going to be putting an image on this tumbler. So I knew that where the seam would be on the tumbler is where I was going Going to be placing my image. So this is a different way that you can use to apply a full wrap. So I've just cut a little piece of that uh, bat paper backing off the back of that vinyl. And then now I'm going to remove those two pieces of blue painter's tape and begin to roll the backing off of the the removable vinyl and get it applied to the cup. So as you guys have seen me do most times, I usually like to apply my my full wraps using my cup cradle. And that is definitely a great way to do it as well. Because this came with multiple pieces, I thought it might be a little bit easier for me to be able to just apply it onto the table in case I needed to do a lot of maneuvering in order to get all of the bricks to be placed down flat. So with removable vinyl, obviously you do have to be careful because sometimes it likes to stick to the transfer tape much more than usual. usual. So usually using either your squeegee tool to help press everything down or if you have to flip it back up just using either a weeding tool or something to get that removable vinyl to release from the transfer tape. So now that I am back to what is going to be the front side of the tumbler, I'm gonna cut off all the excess paper backing and now I'm going to remove the transfer tape from the flip side from where we started. While doing so and removing that paper back, that transfer tape back, I am then going to roll on the rest of the stencil. So I do have quite a bit of overlapping here. And so I'm removing the entire backing and I'm very carefully placing the bricks that I know will stay in place and obviously removing those bricks that are going to overlap where we first started. So just kind of maneuvering 
where I can to release the bricks I'm not going to need. Um, again, I know this is not a seamless pattern, but I had already gone into this knowing that I would just be using that seam area to be where I placed my image. So now that I have this completely applied, I do have obviously some large gaps here. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step in the process. With my stencil vinyl applied, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to spray paint it with a flat black spray paint and then we'll come in and start removing some of the tiles. So while we're waiting for the black spray paint to dry, we're also going to prep our image. So I'm going to spray my image with clear gloss spray paint and I'm going to do three thin coats, letting each coat dry in between. Now that my black spray paint and my image are completely dry, I have cut out my image from my clear water slide paper and I'm just going to trim this up. So what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be using my image as kind of a marker or template for where I want it to go on the cup so I can remove the bricks where I want my image to be placed. So I'm just kind of leaning that image up against my tumbler while I use my weeding tool to lift up the bricks that I'm going to be removing and replacing with alcohol ink as well as we'll later replace that center image area with a little bit of white spray paint to really make our image pop. So I'm just kind of using this as a template to help me have a guideline for where the image will be finally placed before it's officially on the tumbler so I can start creating the brick colors and all of the different designs elements that I want to add to this tumbler. Now that I've removed all the bricks from where my image will go, I'm going to replace those bricks, kind of the surrounding area with alcohol ink. So I have two Ranger alcohol inks here and some makeup wedges. I'm using Purple Twilight, which is what I'm going in on the tumbler right now. And I'm also going to use Wild Plum. So these are colors that I felt that I had in my collection that best matched the image. So the image is a lot of like blues, purples, and almost a magenta color. So I was trying to use some alcohol inks that were complementary of the image to really kind of give this image a section and area to pop. So now I'm going in with Wild Plum and I'm just kind of dabbing and covering up the different white areas. I am going to leave a small section of white right in the middle and this is just going to help be a guideline for where I want my white bleach spot to go when we're at the point to apply the image. But once I've gotten my alcohol inks applied in the way that I like, I'm going to take a little bit of my rubbing alcohol, which is in the spray bottle, give this a couple good spritz to really get the alcohol inks to start to blend and merge together. I like to do a combination of blowing on my tumbler to get the alcohol to move my colors together and then going back in with a clean section of my makeup wedge to assist with some of the blending and air. Areas. It really gives a really gorgeous seamless look and then you don't get all those wedge marks lines that you do when you're using alcohol inks. After my alcohol ink is dry to the touch, I'm now going to move over to the other sections of my tumbler. So I'm going to remove a few sections of the brick stencil that I have going on here so that I can apply other elements to my tumbler. So there's no real way or pattern that I'm thinking in mind. There are several elements though that I wanted to add to the tumbler and I'm kind of just picking and choosing bricks based on how I want my colors to kind of pop along the tumbler. So I've kind of just moved and removed some of the stencils from very close to the water slide, the watercolor or alcohol ink section rather so that I can kind of work from one end of the tumbler to the other. So now that I have what where I want to start removed I'm going to put a little bit of tacket over and over into a medicine cup and with a fine straight paintbrush I'm going to apply my tacket. So what I'm going to be applying to these bricks specifically is I'm going to be using some foils. So I know foils have been all the rave and all the trend right now in the Tumblr community, and I actually have yet to use them. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity because I picked some up at Hobby Lobby to be able to try my hand at applying these foils to this cup. So I am taking a very thin layer again of that tacket over and over in those boxed brick sections and I'm going to apply that thin layer then hit it with my heat gun to speed up the process before applying my foils. So I have cut off a small section of my Enchanted Rose deco foil that I purchased from Hobby Lobby and I have now I'm going to kind of apply it to that warm section that warm tacky section and you can use a combination of rubbing your fingers or using your squeegee tool the soft edge to kind of really burnish and push that foil down. I have found that either worked really well and it probably worked even better 
when I applied a little bit of heat because it really got it to stick down really well. So once I've done that and I feel like everything's really adhered, I'm going to just pull up on that foil backing and it leaves the foil on the cup and kind of removes that piece. So it's really, really cool. I loved kind of using this. And again, I've never used the foils before, but I know they're super popular right now and I really wanted to try my hand at them. So I did the top section as well that you saw me remove. And then I didn't like that you could see the white tumbler underneath. So I decided moving forward that I was going to apply alcohol inks first as the base, let it dry, and then apply the foils over top of the sections that I wanted to have foil on them. This is to give the tumbler a more cohesive look so there isn't white spots all over the tumbler and it looks more blended and purposeful and not kind of just like randomly placed there if that makes sense. So that's what I did for the other sections that I use for foil. And again, I'm just picking and choosing where I feel like the colors are going to go really well together because I do still have a couple other elements that I want to add to this tumbler. Now with all my foil sections applied, I'm going to begin removing other bricks that I'm going to be replacing with glitter. So I chose a kind of blue to purple shifting glitter that I got from Shop Vinyl Gallery. And the color that I'm going to be using is called Perry Twinkle. It's an absolutely beautiful color that I just got in a little while ago and finally just bottled up. So I could not wait to use it because it matched so well with the image that I was using. So again, I'm going to go in with Tack It first. I then do switch to Mod Podge because because I do have to do two coats of the glitter. So, but I'm putting a nice layer of the glue or adhesive down on my cup. And then I'm gonna go over those sections with the Peri Twinkle. So again, I do switch to Mod Podge um, because it does require two coats of glitter in all of my glittered sections. But I really do love how beautiful this blue to purple glitter is. It just really complemented the image so well. And I thought it we need a little bit of sparkle, right? We can't not have any glitter on the tumbler. So I'm just gonna take a dry brush and continue on with the other sections. I'll go back in with a second coat of glitter after the first layer has dried. And then we're gonna move on to the final section or the final additive that we're going to add to this tumbler before we go ahead and put this on the turner. So let's go ahead and fast forward to that section now. So let's move on to the final element on this tumbler. So I've applied glitter, I've applied foils, I've got alcohol ink, and so now we're going to be adding the final element, which is actually going to be vinyl. So I have this absolutely gorgeous a galaxy vinyl that I purchased from the Vinyl Cottage. I have linked it down in the description box below, but what I did with that piece of vinyl is I put it on my mat my Cricut mat just like I would any other piece of vinyl and I recut out the brick template. So this is going to give me those perfect rectangle shapes that I need to be able to replace the pieces that I'm removing with those pieces of vinyl. So I'm going to leave a few sections of black on here. Um, obviously the original color was yellow vinyl, but it's spray painted black now. And I kind of liked the darkness and depth that it gave to. So I am going to leave some of the squares that are already black there, but now I'm going to take my vinyl that I have cut the brick template into, and I'm going to take those perfect rectangles and just replace those in those white open squares. Again, I chose this vinyl uh, just because it really matched everything. It kind of just went with the whole aesthetic that I was going for um, and in my three favorite colors, which is purple, pink, and blue. So I just really thought that this would be another additive piece that I could put on here. I loved adding glitter, but I didn't want to have too much sparkle and too many different colors happening just because I thought it might take away from the image on the front side of the cup. So I thought that by adding vinyl, I was still adding other elements along with the foil that was just a little different, a little unique, and I really just love how it all turned out. So now that I have applied all of my vinyl to the cup, I'm just gonna give this a good once look around. I am going to spray this with clear gloss spray, and we're gonna go ahead and put this on the turner for two coats of epoxy before we get into applying our decal. Now I'm going to create that bleach bot. So I'm taking my flat white spray paint and I'm going to be applying a bleach bot there. And then once that dries, I'm going to follow up with a little bit of some clear gloss spray. And that is to make sure that I get a nice glossy surface to work on since I'm not going to epoxy over this before I apply the water slide. So now I'm just taking a coffee filter and a little bit of 91% rubbing alcohol and I'm just 
I'm just kind of cleaning up all the overspray. So you guys watched me do this in my one of my plaid videos a couple months ago. And it's just that same thing. It's just going to help me kind of shape up the bleach spot that I have going on in the middle section here and kind of clean up that overspray so that all the colors remain vibrant. So and now that I have that applied, let's go ahead and get our water slide decal on. So I have lukewarm to warm water here and I've just used my hand to get some water on the tumbler as well. Then I submerge my water slide decal until the backing is really slippery and able to easily be removed. I'm going to firmly place my hand on the water slide while I remove the backing slowly from the back side of the water slide using my squeegee that I purchased from the Dollar Tree to be able to squeegee out any water and make sure that my decal is wrinkle free. Once I have removed the backing completely from the water slide decal, I'm just going to go over that section again with that squeegee tool making sure to get out any wrinkles and any excess water. Once I feel like the decal looks perfect and it's placed exactly where I want it to be I'm going to go ahead and grab a coffee filter. I'm using a coffee filter because these are typically lint free the ones that I purchased from the dollar store so I don't have to worry about getting debris on my cup and I'm going to firmly press down on my image to make sure that I am getting any of the extra water off my decal and it speeds up the drying process but I'm not harming my decal whatsoever. So that is the final look. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to move on to showing you kind of what I did after my coat of epoxy. So I had realized that I had a little bit of some imperfections, if you will, in some of my glitter and foil sections. So some of the foil and glitter kind of overlapped the definition of in between the brick lines. And so I wanted to kind of define those lines once again. So I'm kind of using this little hack, which is just to use an acrylic paint pen and kind of go over those lines with this black acrylic paint pen that I purchased from Michaels. You can get them on Amazon, any craft store basically. And so I'm just going to redefine some of those lines that got a little obscured by overlapping glitter or overlapping foils. So definitely something to try if you have some lines that need some extra help being defined. So there you have it. That is the final look. This is going to go on the turner for two coats of epoxy after I've cleaned up the rim and made sure everything is nice and smooth. So I wanted to show you kind of my epoxying process. I know I don't show it often, but I wanted to show you how I make sure I get a great funnel coat every time. So I use a little level to make sure that my cup is completely level on my turner before I apply my epoxy. So this is such an important part to make sure you don't get any weird bumps or anything crazy happening at the top or bottom rim of your cup. Make sure that your cup is level on your turner so that you can make sure that you have perfect funnel coats every time. So I did mix up a little bit of a Luma Light uh, amazing clear cast plus and I added a little bit of diamond magic from my Asia creations to give this cup some beautiful sparkle as a final coat so again I do two final coats of epoxy so this is the first of two final coats so this is about although I have 30 mls mixed up I'm going to probably use about 20 or so on this coat and then I will do another 20 as my final I'm going to torch and make sure I have no bubbles and then here is the final look of the cup that if you love today's video definitely make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys again next week